Unify Network Controller 5.12.22 has been release candidate stable now. It's released, I should say. Uh, it actually came out 11 days ago, but then uh, pushed to stable was, I think, only four days ago. Either way, I've loaded it uh, the other day, and it's working great. I've been doing some testing with it, and it's pretty cool. I like the new interface, which we're going to talk about. New interface options, I should say. Um, here's the new features. A net console logging for the USG, a new settings menu. We'll talk about that. A Wi-Fi AI under the new settings menu and Wi-Fi schedule. And yeah, I know AI is a buzzword, but it's basically an intelligent Wi-Fi uh, tool. So that's kind of neat. Uh, they have a whole lot of other little details that we're going to cover, including add per port STP toggle for panels. Now on the Unifies, you can add a per port option, whether or not you want spanning tree on. I haven't figured this one out yet. I mean, I see it, but I don't know what it actually means. Add wired experience score to client portal panel. We'll show that too, and I'm not really... Um, I, I get a 98% on mine, and I'm not sure why. We'll cover that. Uh, there's a bunch of little details in here. Filter Wi-Fi metrics by selected APs. Lots of little... Uh, details and things like that. Some changes to the speed limit tests and uh, factoring, refactor high performance devices and back to auto optimized networks. This is something we have some larger deployments that we're managing. So I'm going to keep an eye on this and how it works as we roll this out to some of those clients and update them to the latest firmware. There's also the option in here to turn on net console logging for USG. Uh, for those of you that do use USGs, and we don't use very many of them, very many of them, uh, right here is the Unify USG reporting how to enable Net Council debug. I'll leave a link to this, uh, but this basically allows more detailed logging of the USG in terms of you know when you're doing some troubleshooting and things like that, which is kind of cool. Um, they also have some enhanced, like the way they do the uh, add site to site VPN module and better uh, property panel experience graphs. A lot of these are related to when you're using USG to get that more in depth about the deep packet inspection. Now, before we jump in real quick, I, I'd like to thank an affiliate of the channel. And if you're interested in not dealing with updating a controller and managing it yourself, uh, my friends over at Hostify. Uh, Hostify is a cloud-based unified controller that takes the hassle out of hosting and updates, setup and installing automatic secure, includes updates, monitoring and more, also supports uh, UNMS, UCRM and video. Check it out here. We have an offer code uh, on our page, Partners Affiliates. It's also down below in the description. And in case you're wondering, are they ready? Are they up to date with the 5.122? Uh, they will be three more days. And this was posted on uh, November 12th. So probably by tomorrow, or depending on when you're watching this video, uh, it sounds like by November 5th, they're going to have the 5.122 on theirs as well. You don't have to deal with updating it yourself. Not that it's been too difficult to update, but uh, if you're looking for a pain-free way to host your Unify system with all the bells and whistles, the, the support and them people are great. And for those of you asking, yes, I'm going to be doing a uh, interview at some point in time, hopefully soon with Riley, who runs Hostify. Uh, but I've reviewed the product. I've recommended a lot of people who don't want to deal with it. It's uh, been a great product. No one's had any complaints. And I've been testing it out myself for uh, a few times. And it's been, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it. You know, we'd like to run our own controller. I have the skill set to do so. But if you're going, you know what? I don't have time for that. Uh, these guys do. Uh, they do a great job of it. They also announced they have 20,000 devices. I've seen that in their tweet now out in there, I believe, right here, right here. Milestone today, we have 20,000 unified devices connected to HostFinet. That's impressive. Um, so you, they got some experience with the product. We'll just say that. He's actually been a cool sounding board. I message with uh, the CEO and owner um, every now and then. He certainly has some insight into Unify that I don't have because running $20,000, 20,000 devices on the controller, uh, a single controller like they do is a really interesting challenge. And he's learned a lot about um, the way it works from the back end and offered me some insight. All right, back to the content here. While we're looking at all these little things and all these changes, that's cool. Um, improved device fingerprint evade. If we're going to play with that too, uh, that's kind of neat that you can now add little icons and things. Or maybe that was before I didn't see it, but it's. I'll show you how it works. It's probably the best way I'm going to start demoing all this. Now, as for the interface, some people said it was unstable with the new version. I'm going to say that it really wasn't. Um, one of the things I will definitely point out is if you have a slower computer or like my older laptop that I replaced, it renders this really slow uh, compared to this computer, which is quite fast and renders it really well. Um, we'll jump over here to stats page. And you can see like when you're doing all these animations in a browser, this certainly causes some, you know, uh, processor power to move around to do it. I love the way it looks, but that comes at the expense of having a faster processor to run your browser, which who who would have thought all these years later? Um, I do like this, and this is something that I'm zooming out because when you hit show all clients and show everything connected to it, 
I like it, but it can be a little bit challenging to see everything when you're expanding and moving around, but it, it's kind of cool. Now, this comes back to where I talked about the Wi-Fi experience score, or not Wi-Fi, but the actual experience score they have for wired connections. So here's my computer, which, by the way, I put the little Linux icon on it. I'll show you how you do that. Um, and I have a 90%. We all seem to have a 90% score, except for a few things have a 100% score. And I don't know why, because I don't know what those metrics mean. These are the experience scores for when things are physically plugged in on the wired. I kind of got it with the wireless scores. So like my phone has a 90%. Uh, Brett's phone's got a 90%, 95 with this other Android device. Uh, this is connected at 100%. This is actually the charger for my um, Tesla running the Zentry OS, I guess, and it's the uh, testing system. It automatically recognized the, oh, cool, our Amazon Dot that we have, what we're playing with over here. Um, anyways, the US UVG3 cameras, it's got an icon for those right away, which I think is kind of cool. So it recognized those, and these are front uh, plugged into the PoE. So this is part of that where we can change up the icons. Now, where do we do that? If we look over here at the clients, and we're going to go all, and we'll filter for Tom. So there's Tom. Pop this out. And you can change the icon right here. You go under the device fingerprint, which, by the way, it doesn't. It didn't fill any of this in. So if we revert, this is actually what it did. And then you go here, find icon, and when you type in Linux, we can pick some different Linux options in here. Uh, Linux laptop, Linux desktop, I like the Linux PC. But when you hit submit, it says Red Hat Linux PC uh, source was user submitted. So it's not really doing fingerprinting uh, per se. So I haven't really played much with that, but I thought it was cool because I can label things. It did have my Google Pixel XL uh, 2 in here. So Google 2 Pixel XL, and it lets me know which Wi-Fi it's connected to and puts a little cool icon there. Now back over to the wired and uh, let's go back to the other view, close this out, which, by the way, it now goes back and forth between icon view and list view, depending on how many devices it sees. When you filter, it'll put it at icon view, but when you hit the list, you don't have to switch back and forth. Um, but it's got the stats here, so I can see things like this. But like I said, this 90% score for some of the things, I don't really know what that means. Um, maybe I'll find, maybe someone can link to it, and there's an article I just haven't been able to find because I try to find like a write-up from Unify on defining the... Uh, scores, but not really. So why am I only at 90%? All right, back to some of the other things. Now the device menus look much the same here. And uh, so like we'll go to here, front 24 port, we'll pop this out and we'll go to the ports and we'll, uh, here's where the front counter computer is connected. And right here's where you can uh, change like the spanning true protocol and whether or not you want it enabled, like I said, on a per port basis, if you want to do that and override it. So that, that's obviously uh, something real specific you can do. Uh, Mac filtering. I, this has actually been here for a little while, but you can actually whitelist each Mac address on there. Uh, so that's kind of cool that you can do that. I didn't see anything else in here that looks substantially uh, different, but uh, definitely nice that they added a feature. Now let's jump in here to the settings. Now you're probably going, Tom, this looks exactly the same like all the settings that we've always seen. And at first I was trying to figure out where the new settings were because I don't know, you look at something so long you don't notice that it says right here, try new settings. So we're gonna hit try. Now right here is back to classic mode. So you can switch back and forth between them. And uh, one of the things, I'll move my head a little bit out of the way. So down here at the bottom, it says create new Wi-Fi network. So it, they've changed the way it works a little bit. So you can create a basic Wi-Fi network, an advanced Wi-Fi network. Um, it, it's all the same options, just kind of laid out a little bit differently. I, I like the new interface. I think this is pretty nice. Um, so we'll go back over here, basic, and you can wizard your way through it. So step one of two. So they didn't get rid of all of them. I like the fact that they still have all the advanced options for those that want to uh, do something very detailed or just a simple options because we know there's a lot of people just using this and go, eh, I'm not sure what all those advanced options mean. Just give me a basic Wi-Fi network. So kind of cool that you can do that. You still have your groups. You still have your Wi-Fi schedules. Um, but their scheduling is actually kind of slick here. So you can actually drag and drop selected networks Wednesday, block, start, block, time. This is really kind of nice. You can build out if you want scheduled Wi-Fi. They get a really nice menu for this. This is some of the new features they've uh, really brought up on it. So I don't really use that, but uh, I imagine maybe school systems and some other places, they want Wi-Fi only at certain times or turn it off when you're not there so you don't have to worry people uh, trying to poke at your Wi-Fi when you're not in the office, especially um, places that offer free Wi-Fi. It might make a lot of sense. 
Now we've only have this enabled on our network, so I don't have a lot of stats or data, but this is the uh, Wi-Fi ex AI experience that we just, I didn't turn it on until today. Uh, you, how often do you want to run it? And what it does is it runs a scan on a schedule to say, all right, there's a scan time and it's going to determine like what the best Wi-Fi settings are based on, you know, other neighboring access points and whether or not there's any changes to be made uh, and what's uh, channels need to be on there. So it's going to kind of calculate and figure these things out. Uh, once I've done a little bit of testing, I will, I guess, I'd be following up with this AI Wi-Fi because we have some larger deployments I want to test this on and I want to see, you know, how it works. Now over here, general internet settings. Uh, this is where you can enable speed tests, ISP capabilities, and set this. We don't use the USG at our office, so that's nothing there. Unfortunately here, create new WAN network that I can find. Still nowhere to put um, a... IP address more than one on the WAN side. So yeah, that's still kind of a no-go for a lot of people with the USG who have this uh, as a problem. So uh, it's, I don't know when they're ever going to get rid of, get that set up so we can actually add multiple WAN IPs officially, not through some backend way to the USGs. Network, local networks, here's the VLANs. You can create network, create standard network, create advanced network, kind of the same concept again, um, where you can, set this up. I, I like that, you know, small, medium, large, custom. So if you do the basics here, it's like that versus uh, leave. We'll create new network. And if you go to advanced, corporate, VLAN only. So, you know, you can still do the VLAN only. You can do it right here. It's a little, like I said, a little bit different, but um, I like this, uh, that we can just put these things in there. Whoops. Network name, test, VLAN. Yeah. So we'll just close this and not worry about this and create the VLAN ID. Like I said, it works very similar, but just a little bit different layout, but that back to, we can do a basic or advanced. Now I have not played with any of the hotspots, but I believe they've updated the way the hotspot system works. It's not something I've, we've used a lot, um, but it's kind of cool. We have a couple of clients using it, but we didn't set it up. Uh, once again, we sometimes do the engineering for these companies, but they knew how to set up this part or sometimes they're using a third party for authentication and payment. Uh, therefore they did you know, the rest of the setup. Threat management, GOIP filtering. Um, these are features that have been there for a little while. This is part of the USG's internet security, which I believe uses Sericata under the hood. Um, I don't know that, I don't have uh, one of them I can show you right now. Maybe I'll do some testing in a future on that. But like I said, that's uh, part of the USG. VPN, create new VPN server. Basic VPN or advanced VPN. Now, I really love the site to site when you have two USG's. The downside is we can do an L2P server or PPTP server. That's it. No cool advanced open VPN. I eh, guess not. So uh, same thing here, create VPN connection, unify VPN, USG as VPN to your network, USG to external VPN. We only have that as a client as an option, uh, PPTP. So once again, we haven't seen any more advanced uh, settings in there. But we do have some of these in here. We get SNMP, UNP, static routes, some of the other things you can do when you're using that. Like I said, we don't have a lot of USG, so I can't really cover all those. Configuration profiles are still there. Preferences, formatting, user interface. Um, this is kind of cool. LED settings and screen brightness. I believe this is for the new devices that they have uh, that have that option. So you can go ahead and do that. We don't have any of those new unifies that have little LED screens on them, but I don't know if this controls the uh, cloud key. So I'm going to do some testing with that later. Look and feel. Yeah, we can do this still too. So uh, someone complained. I think I had it on the light theme before. But I got to refresh the page, I think. Or do we got to go back here? There we go. Now we're back to the light theme, which people I know really aren't a big fan of. <laughs> Preferences, user interface. I do like the dark theme as well. I usually do things on dark theme. Uh, default undocked panels, some of these things are still here as well. So you can do that. Uh, formatting, so you can change to 24 formats and some advanced, so refresh rates, uh, responsive tables, etc. Alerts, events and settings, network settings, local time optimizations. Uh, Auto-optimized network is located here now under the uh, settings. Device authentication, so you can still push your SSH keys in there, which I do recommend. It makes it very handy. Updates, check for updates in the controller, check for updates in there. Firmware. This is kind of cool too. You can enable automatic upgrades, but it does have under advanced here, access private release channels to your Ubiquity account. So you can log in your Ubiquity account and choose the release channel. So let me, well, let me do it. 
Eh, not unless I'm logged in. We don't have this tied to a cloud controller, but now they'll let you actually choose the release channel from, I believe, stable to the more advanced one. So uh, I thought that's kind of cool uh, that they put that in there. And then the controller settings, I'm not going to show them right now. It's got some of our private data in there, but yeah, um, those the controller settings are much the same. They didn't, I don't see much difference in there. Uh, but that's the whole Unify updated interface. Like I said, I really think it's kind of cool. Oops, it uh, put the theme back over here. There we go. I don't know why it didn't save, but um, I probably didn't hit the apply. The the theme update, the um, new settings, the AI system, I'm going to, like I said, do some more advanced videos on it. we got to do some testing. It's kind of new. And I want to do it at a site that has a lot of clients. Uh, so that's hopefully will, you know, make a big difference in terms of uh, how it handles all of it. Because one of our clients has a lot of neighboring access points because it's an outdoor Wi-Fi system for a big venue. And it's kind of in the middle of a neighborhood and there's a lot of other competing Wi-Fi there. So we've done our own tuning to try to push them to channels that weren't used. But I like that this has a kind of an automatic system. So as the Wi-Fi changes, because that's the problem, is, as I said, it was a house systems that are around our client system, they change the Wi-Fi. So you can't just set it and forget it. You kind of have to change it once in a while based on things that are going on. And the fact that it can do like a daily scan in case, you know, someone changes things. So my overall impressions though, uh, it's not had a problem. I've granted only run it for a few days. I'll update as needed. Uh, and but it looks good. I don't see a reason not to update it. And if you're on Hostify, they're going to take care of the back end for you. And maybe I'll plug in a USG back at home for a little while just to uh, dive into some of the tests and see how they've updated some of the threat management um, and how they've updated some of the deep packet inspection. I think it's a cool feature. I know it's one of the reasons people like the USGs, but my advanced use of VPNs uh, frequently are why I have trouble with USGs. I wish they would add some of the support for that because I would like to have it all complete in the dashboard and the multiple WAN IPs. That's how we see a big hang up. Um, all right, and thanks. And of course, you can get this now. It's all available from their site and ready for download. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.